Listen closely while I tell you about something that happened to me the other day. I was buying bread from a man in Brussels. This guy, he was six foot four and full of muscles. So I said, do you speak my language? Wouldn't you know it? He smiled and gave me a Vegemite sandwich. And then he said, do you come from the land down under where women glow and men plunder? Can't you hear? Can't you hear the thunder? You better run. You better take cover. Today, we return to the land of plenty. Yes, it's Aussie part two. Right now on... You tried it. You tried that. We're back in Australia to try some snacks. And uh, I'm Nick Novak with my pal Shade Hancock. Howdy. And Nick Iger. Good day. To be clear, we're not actually in Australia, but... <laughs> oh. <laughs> then hello, I guess. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, I spent all that time swirling my toilet water in the opposite direction for nothing. <laughs> That's what they do. The, the, the water doesn't swirl that way. The people <laughs> force that. Don't you know? It's a well-known fact. In Australia, everybody has what they call toilet sticks. And they just take them and stick them whenever after they take a crap and just swirl them in the other direction. It's some weird compulsion they have to have. I don't know. Geiger, you're a well-known man of toilet sticks, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I call mine a plunger. You come, you come from a long line of toilet stick lovers. <laughs> yeah. It makes it real awkward at work when it looks like I'm just working up a witch's brew in there. They're like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> toil, toil, and trouble. I guess the spells and incantations I'm saying out loud aren't helping the image. We did kind of a obnoxious number on Australia first time around. And we got a little, some feedback. I have a friend and listener, Simone, who lives in Australia and listened and gave some feedback on some of the things we said about Australia. So we're going to play those, and then I think we need need to react and defend ourselves. So um, first she just kind of was saying hello to us. So. Hello, Nick and your fellow podcasters. This is Simone from Australia. The first thing you probably noticed is that I said hello and not g'day. Not many people say g'day. It is common, but very rarely used in the first greeting, particularly in a more formal setting. It's a colloquialism, so don't expect all Australians to greet you with a good day. All right. So, Geiger, you you said good day right when we started. Yeah. You're a dumbass. Good damn. Who gives a shit? I mean, come on. It sounds like she wants us to have a bad day. <laughs> a bidet. A bidet? Wait. <laughs> bidet. Uh, bidet, mate. <laughs> Here's my toilet stick. <laughs> <laughs> Would anyone actually show up to Australia? Get off the plane and just start saying good day to people. <laughs> That's it. So uh, related to that, I, I went to Germany for work and I'm walking with my boss and, and there's another guy and like, we're just walking down the street and for some reason I was like, oh yeah, okay. Like I did like a big terrible <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. My, da- my, my boss is like, what are you doing? Like we're in Germany. That's offensive. <laughs> like what are you? So he always makes fun of me about it. So yeah, I probably would. So Simone, I did not know that again, as we just always hear here that people say good day like a stereotypical Australian phrase for Americans. So um, I was unaware. And from now on, any Australians I see, which I'll be frank, is really just a few people I work with. And if I go to the zoo and see a kangaroo, uh, <laughs> I will just say hello. What surprised me is that she said they said hello. I mean, I didn't think they said good day. I thought they walked around saying sup, bitch, to everybody. <laughs> 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 sup, bitch. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> I thought you just casually, like, waved your toilet stick towards them. <laughs> the wet end of your toilet stick. The, and, and then the, the formal greeting is you, like, tap the toilet stick on both their shoulders like you're knighting them. <laughs> I thought they were just so rough and tumble people. You just walked up and just, just left cross someone to the face. That's a greeting. With the toilet stick? <laughs> with a cool, with a dirty toilet stick. <laughs> Swirled my piss, mate, and just crack it over their head. Okay. Well, someone's gonna have a lot of retractions to our retractions. <laughs> <laughs> we also don't have toilet sticks, you idiot. Another thing we talked a lot about was crack Dundee. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Simone had some thoughts about crack Dundee. The highest grossing Australian movie is Crocodile Dundee. Um, I find this kind of alarming because I I personally think the movie is a colossal wank. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a to me it's a cultural cringe, but you know, it, some people like him, some people don't. 
Yeah, I, I personally, yeah, I just think it's a joke myself. I, I really don't like the movie. Paul Hogan can't act his way out of a wet paper bag with a hole in it either. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Throwing shade. Really came after Paul Hogan at the end. <laughs> so definitely giving Paul Ho- Hogan a number. Um, mm-hmm. I That's not surprising. I was under no impression that people in Australia <laughs> worshipped Craig Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> Don't isn't the Oscar equivalent uh, in Australia a Dundee? They just hand you like <laughs> the gold standard of cinema. Who is who is the equivalent of Crack Dundee for the United States? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Dane Cook. <laughs> 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 what, were, what were you gonna say? I get Bear Dundee. Dane. <laughs> I said Dane Cook. <laughs> but, uh, Bear Dundee. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of what like what else would it compete with, though. She's like, oh, it's the highest grossing movie, but I couldn't tell you another Australian movie, I guess. There's been some Australian actor, right? Hugh Jackman and Eric Bana. That's true. Isn't Christian Bale Australian? I watched some uh, Australian movie where they were like in the outback. And there's like a giant fence, rabbit proof fence. That's what it was. Oh, they wait. Were they in an outback restaurant <laughs> or they were in the outback? Yeah. Um, and also uh, Kangaroo Jack. <laughs> that's true <laughs> i forgot all about classic cinema kangaroo one Jack. of the worst movies i've ever seen where it was like the trailer was so misleading they made it seem like it was like oh this family like friendly kind of thing with a cartoon kangaroo that raps and that's really just one like 30 second segment after jerry o'connell gets knocked out he like hallucinates a rapping kangaroo that movie's really bad that's probably worse than croc dundee i would say wait the kangaroo was just a regular kangaroo yeah it's a regular kangaroo in the movie yeah <laughs> what would you guys say is the equivalent like i i it does not shock me to find out an australian person is embarrassed that that's what americans think of like australian people based on croc dundee what american movie do you think like you would be just like oh that's not us like but people probably look at it and go oh this is what america is i guess it's hard to say because hollywood is american movies are everywhere right i mean Maybe not a movie, but like Home Improvement or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking like Larry the Cable Guy or something. The Big Bang Theory. Like, what's the least funny show I can think of? <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half Crocs. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wouldn't want them to think that, that Independence Day is representative of us. You know, like, there's still a White House. It hasn't been destroyed by aliens. So I really wouldn't want them to, like, think that that's real life. <laughs> I think, I think every, all of Australian uh, cinema and entertainment is just... American shows with the word crack put in them, and they all right. star, star Paul right. Hogan. Famous show, Crock Friends. <laughs> Crock Friends. You just turn, it's a one word show, and you just put crock in front of it. <laughs> crock of Thrones. <laughs> all the movies are that, too. It's like Mission Impossible, Crock Out. <laughs> Instead of house, it's now called Croc House. It just sounds like a house full of Crocs. Crocs out. They took Croc Dundee and then they like redubbed it over with like new Australian actors and re-released it and called it Croc Croc Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> Tina Fey's famous show Thirty Croc. <laughs> <laughs> <That's it. laughs> we also then um, talked about what Chad you had actually put up online that uh, Australia was the land of prisoners, so. I think she took some offense to that, so uh, she also commented on that. What's interesting is I noticed on your Facebook page your headline referred to us as the land of prisoners. I can see why you thought us the land of prisoners, but it's interesting because Australia's first peoples arrived probably about 100,000 years ago. And yes, Australia was established by European settlers in 1788, um, essentially as a as a penal colony, but also on those in that first fleet, which comprised 11 boats led by the Sirius and Captain Arthur <laughs> Philip, were a lot of free settlers as well. We weren't all descended from convicts, but to be honest, a lot of Australians take a bit of a bit of a pride in being as, as descended from convicts. And frankly, no one cares because being you know, over 200 years ago, yeah, it's just too long ago for people to be worried about. We tend not to worry about that sort of stuff in ancestry because, you know, it's what we know. You just got pwned. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I have two reactions to that. First of all, thank you so much for reading the Wikipedia entry for Australian's history to us. <laughs> That's first. Second of all, I find it very funny that she took issue with me calling them the land of prisoners and not the part where I said everyone there has STDs. <laughs> <laughs> well, that part's true. 
right. <laughs> Geiger, you are a descendant from prisoners, and you are totally ashamed, right? Yeah, my dad's in jail. <laughs> <laughs> That's what descendant means, right? Now, uh, yeah, no, who cares, right? Like she said, everyone knows that anything that happened 200 years ago isn't relevant anymore. <laughs> right. America's history of full of things that we just don't want to talk anymore about things that rhyme with, I don't know, Mavery, <laughs> the Nibble Moor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and Novak, you also are a descendant of convicts, right? Or is that, or were they in a convent? I always get it confused. Were they nuns or were they? they actually, no, they, yes, that was. They were in a convent during the Millville War. <laughs> 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 Somehow you're a descendant of famously celibate nuns. So those nuns, those nuns were really fucking like mad during that Mivel War. Yeah. Well, they thought the world was going to end. Also, some of my ancestors were in the uh, the War of Mateen Melf. <laughs> Where they said Mifty War Morty or Mike. <laughs> What is going on? <laughs> All right. There's a, two more we got to address quick. Uh, we didn't talk about the Tasmanian Devil. Um, before, but it's just I can't believe we missed it. Yeah, he puts the Taz in Tasmania. <laughs> so, Simone had, to, um, had something to say about the Tasmanian Devil. Another animal of ours that you're probably familiar with is the Tasmanian Devil, and this will be via the work of the animators and writers at Warner Brothers, and I don't know what the hell drugs they were taking because the portrayal of the Tasmanian Devil in, in the Bugs Bunny cartoons could not be further from the truth. They are a rather ferocious little thing, but they don't get around in mini cyclones and they don't stand there drooling and panting like and shaking like some pervert with a kind of palsy. You know, that's that's nothing could be further from the truth. <laughs> okay. Let's be clear. The Tasmanian devil is a pervert, there's no way around it. <laughs> I think Chester Cheetah told me he ran into a Tasmanian devil on his Sexual uh, addiction class. I can't see the Tasmanian Devil the same way now that I. I just think, I just keep thinking he's a, some drooling pervert. I am really glad that she enlightened us that they're not really like the cartoon Tasmanian Devil. I was pretty confused. She also I actually called her afterwards. She also explained to me that uh, uh, mice don't really wear pants either. So thanks for that one. <laughs> and she's like, oh, skunks don't actually like try to seduce other skunks with bad French accents. No, we're being mean. That's no fun. But, but yes. I, <laughs> yeah. What's uh, new? No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. no I, I guess I never. You're right that they're from Australia, but I like, I guess Tasmanian devils are so far from my daily consciousness. I never even thought to think of them. The last one, and we didn't touch on it much, maybe briefly, was uh, Foster's. It's Australian for beer. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> we think of that as the Australian beer around here. And Simone uh, wanted to touch on Foster's. I'm pretty sure before we play this that Foster's is probably brewed in the same place that people use their toilet sticks. <laughs> Since you guys are discussing all things culinary... Regarding Australia's produce, now, if, you're, if you've got your socks on, I would suggest you remove them because this will knock them off. <laughs> but neither I nor my fellow countrymen drink Foster's. I do not know a single Australian who likes it. The reason we export the fucking stuff is that it's so disgusting, nobody here will drink it. And we think it tastes like carbonated donkey urine. <laughs> oh, man, the moon is the master of the hot take. <laughs> Is she related to that guy that thinks uh, cider tastes like a dolphin's asshole? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I will admit, I knew this one because um, yeah. a couple people from work uh, lived in Australia for a while, and they like no one drinks. They told me like no one, hey, everyone hates Fosters over there. I think it is pretty well known that yeah, nobody likes Fosters either Australia or stateside. <laughs> it's funny though because something like Guinness is actually really enjoyed in Ireland. It tastes yeah, different. Very than, popular in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, it's different than what it is here. But Foster's is clearly like an Americanized version of some shitty beer, apparently. I also think it's funny about Foster's. They sell it in these gigantic cans. I've never seen a way to like enjoy a small Foster's. But I know we made fun of Simone, but I do appreciate her her knowledge and wisdom in this uh, country, Australia. I hope she listens. Does she listen? Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope she won't be after this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sending uh, those to us. We'd love to have listeners get involved and... So we are going to move on and try some more stuff from Australia. And Chad, why don't you give everyone the recap on how we came about these snacks? 
quick recap was we have some uh, some other listeners in Australia, not Simone, my friend Adam, who wanted to send us a bunch of Australian snacks after he heard us try Tim Tams. So yeah, sent us a package with a bunch of stuff, and we're going to try three more of them today. All right, and we have a rating system for these snacks. It is a love debt, like debt, indifferent to debt, dislike debt, or hate debt. So there are five choices, and let's see where we fall on these. And let's start with the uh, snacky Sun Bites. And this is uh, the Sun Bites Grain Waves plus Sweet Potato. Sun Bites seem to be, um, if I just saw these on the shelf here, I would think of as a generic version of Sun Chips. They are much smaller than a Sun Chip, maybe hence the bite. And this flavor is cream cheese and herb. Do you guys like Sun Chips? Yes. Uh, not, not a lot. I think it's funny, though, Sun Chips get this. I think people think they're healthier because they're like grains and stuff, but they're not. They're just chips. These things are very crunchy. Yeah. They are crunchier than Sun Chip. I like the consistency and crunch better than a Sun Chip. Yep. This is corn, wheat, oats, sweet potato, and then baked up till they're crispy and crunchy and then seasoned. I don't know if I'm getting any sweet potato flavor, but I'm definitely tasting the cream cheese and the herbs. Yeah, I tend to think that Sun Chips are a little too brittle, just kind of grainy, and I'm not getting that from these. Yeah, the Sun Chips definitely, like when you get to the bottom of the bag, there's just a ton of sharp shards of chip because, like you said, they break a lot. This is almost like more cracker-like. Right. What do you think, Edgar? These are good. I almost wonder if the sweet potato is just for color because they have a kind of an orange color to them. But they kind of look like a hard, wavy Frito almost. Um, but they're very good. This is another one I think would be good with dip. Like if you had like some uh, ranch something or sour cream or whatever like that, I think it'd be. It's a little more seasoned, so it would depend on what the dip is. But uh, it would hold up well to holding dip. These are solid like that. These are tasty. I could, I would definitely eat these. It is hard to read the nutrition facts because it's just the way it's presented is a lot different than we're used to. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how many calories they were. Yeah. <laughs> I think Tasmanian Devil wrote this. <laughs> Chad, what do you think? These are outstanding. I really like the flavor that's coming through. I like how crunchy it is. I don't normally give this for a lot of like the more savory or, or um, chip-like snacks, but these things are a home run for me. Love that. Wow. I am pleasantly surprised by this as well. I did not expect to really like these. Not a sweet potato guy, but like you said, it's not strongly sweet potato flavored. I do like cream cheese, and I can taste that coming through. I like the consistency. I would eat them again. I'm going to give it a strong like that. So high ratings right off the bat here for the surprise breakout snack Sun Bites. Yeah, I would not have guessed that. I think, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the last... Australian episode we did, we liked almost everything too, right? Yes. They're all pretty well. So, so far, Australia is on a good street. That's right. And these were, of course, handpicked. That's true. They have to have good snacks to make up for how awful their population of prisoners is. <laughs> 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 let's uh, let's move on to the cherry ripe. And this one I'm, I'm not, I'm also not thinking uh, too highly about because I'm not a huge cherry flavored snack person. Also, this has coconut. Uh, It says ripe, juicy cherries and coconut in old gold, rich, dark chocolate. Yeah, I'm not much of a fruit and chocolate guy. I will say cherry ripe is just an, I don't know why, it just strikes me as a funny name. Such a weird, like, apple bad, like, kind of like cherry ripe. (laughs) It just sounds like something a pervert might say, like the pervert walks in and he's like, cherry ripe. And then he spins around in circles. and... (laughs) And then Warner Brothers is like, let's build a franchise around him. Who do you think uh, would star in Crack Seinfeld? Crack Seinfeld? (laughs) Um... (laughs) Jerry Crockfeld? What am I supposed to say here? I'm confused. Crockmer just slides in the door. (laughs) What's the deal with toilet sticks? (laughs) (laughs) All right. um, This is... I don't know. It's not strongly cherry flavored. This is strange. The you could you the coke. What I get from the coconut is the texture more than the taste. Yeah, it, it's almost like the filling is all coconut, but that coconut is like cherry flavored. If that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Hmm. The consistency here is not good. The coconut is really ruining it, but it's also just kind of weirdly soft from the cherries, and the flavor is just not really doing it for me either. Uh, so this is actually the first Australian snack that I haven't really liked. I think this thing is garbage. I'm going to go dislike that. All right. The chocolate's fine. The coconut's not great. The coconut and cherry combination, not great. I'm going to double up with Chad here 
and do a dislike that. So that's two. And now let's pass it on to the Croc Prince of Bel Air, Nick Geiger. <laughs> croc, croc, croc. I don't know what he says. <laughs> now, this is a story all about Croc. My Croc got Croc, 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 Croc. <laughs> yeah, Will Smith. Hey, his name is Croc Smith. Croc Smith. Do you think Paul Hogan is uh, in trouble for being on the Croxby show? <laughs> just for being on it i don't think the other <laughs> actors are in trouble for being... a better way to say that <laughs> hey guys bill crosby raped somebody so you're also going to do <laughs> judy is like what the fuck did i do uh... <laughs> shut up cracksby <laughs> yeah. just a big alligator sitting in a well, crocodile i'm a fucking moron a big crocodile <laughs> sitting, at the tri- <laughs> sitting at the trial al dundee al dundee there you go Yeah, no, so this uh, cherry ripe is not good. Uh, This is, I don't, I'm really, guys, I got something explosive to say. (laughs) Didn't care for it. No, this was, uh, this tasted like crock. I mean, it was just, I don't love coconut a ton. We're just shoving crock into stuff now, right? I, I don't love cherry and chocolate. The coconut kind of tasted weird. There was no flavor for the coconut. Yeah, I think you're totally right, Novak, that all you pick up is the texture. And so you, all you're left with is like somewhat like fake flavor of cherry. Right. You know what I mean? It's like a fit, like almost like popsicle juice right. that they pour in there that, and they make it. Chocolate was fine, but uh, this is also a dislike that for me. This is an unwelcome visitor all the way around. Would you say this tastes better or worse than carbonated donkey urine? Hmm. I can't say I've tried. I mean, I don't want to knock it till I've tried it. It might be good. I know you are Mr. Carbonated Donkey Urine. I, I, yeah, it's one of my many culinary pleasures. So, sorry, Adam. This is a, a big swing and a miss with the cherry ripe. Now, again, this is something that he liked. He likes all these snacks that he gave us. I'm not sure, so let's say yes. Okay. Okay. Well, um, we are going to do a segment that has nothing to do. With all <laughs> so crack your enthusiasm for the time being, and <laughs> we are going to move on. So, <laughs> Chad, walk us through, because you were the one who wanted to try this drink, Dad. So, there are these new Diet Coke flavors that came out. Uh, we've talked about pop on this before and our preferences therein. In particular, I think diet beverages in general are just an absolute abomination. I'm with you. I'd probably rather drink a Foster's, but uh, maybe with some flavor added, then it would be good. So this particular Diet Coke flavor that we picked out is the Twisted Mango. For me, the the problem with diet beverages is actually the the whole reason that they're diet, which is that sugar substitute. So whether it's like aspartame or whichever one they decide to put in, I can always taste it in that aftertaste. And it's just so gross compared to regular sugar or even compared to corn syrup that they use in most of these things. So let's give this a shot. This is the Twisted Mango Diet Coke flavor. So we're going to have a rating system here. So this is a three-point rating system. And since this is for Coke, it's going to be a Coke-based system. So here we go. Starting at the top, coked up. <laughs> in the middle, we have first one's free. <laughs> and then at the bottom, we have I'm Uma Thurman in Pulp Fiction, and I thought your Coke was actually heroin. Now I've overdosed, so John Travolta, you need to stab me in the heart with adrenaline. That's okay. the rating? I hope I don't hate this. That's the bottom rating. <laughs> you mean crack fiction. I'm Croc Thurman and Croc Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cracked up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hate Diet Coke. You said that, well, or Diet Anything. Yeah. But maybe the flavor will change my mind. I'm not sure I'm actually getting much mango here. This, it, I get it on, like, th- like, the initial wave goes down your mouth, and I don't taste it, and then, like, I kind of taste on the back of my tongue, like, a little bit of a fruity something yeah a little in the aftertaste there it is kind of just tastes like di- a little bit of a sweeter di- diet coke i gotta be honest right like the the coke part of it isn't there it doesn't taste like cola as much yeah i could definitely taste some mango i taste something but i think my brain's calling it mango because i'm reading that word like there's no way i could drink this and say this is mango i would never guess that yeah, that's a good point. Like, if you told, like, I if I picked up and drank it, I'd say something tasted maybe vaguely fruity, but I wouldn't necessarily know that it was mango. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Well, I'll start us off. This is this is a tough call because I already don't really like diet soda. If I did, maybe I would. I could just pull an indifferent. 
or pull a uh, what the hell is the middle one? First one's free. Pull first one's free. But because I I can only go on my own feelings, I have to say I'm Crack Thurman from Crack Fiction, and I thought this was heroin, but it's actually coke. (laughs) And so you have to stab me through the heart. I probably messed that up, but (laughs) you got the drugs reversed. Yeah. (laughs) Gagger, you are you in line with me here? Yeah, this isn't good. It tastes like Diet Coke. If you don't, I mean, if you like Diet Coke, a lot of people do. That's fine. I prefer uh, Crocter Pepper. (laughs) <laughs> i've been sitting on that a while uh, <laughs> uh, I, I i don't know i yeah i don't like diet, diet coke and the the fruit flavor is so much that again i i think if i didn't know that it's supposed to taste like mango i'd have no idea it would i would just think something tastes a little off about this diet coke like i'd almost just assume like it sat in the warehouse too long so it's a big uh croc thurman wanted some fucking kookaburras whatever it was uh heroin <laughs> and she got coke instead and now, or no did coke asked for coke got heroin overdosed and john travolta stabbed her in the heart with a toilet stick <laughs> a sharpened toilet stick a sharpened shit covered toilet stick <laughs> all right chad this is very bad this is really really bad i actually think it's worse than regular diet coke because it has that bad fake sugar aftertaste and then on top of that it has what i guess is mango aftertaste but like you guys said i would never have guessed that in a million years i would have just thought there's some other weird aftertaste on top of it this is really 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 bad so all i can say is what is the deal with this diet coke flavor <laughs> that's, that's my croc sign that's all about. you can say <laughs> All I can say is this weird ass impression of Jerry Seinfeld. No, Croc Seinfeld. <laughs> Croc Seinfeld. Get it right. That's well his name. Played. His birth name is Croc Seinfeld. <laughs> this gets a Croc Thurman, Croc Fiction, Croc Overdose, Croc Stab and Heart by Croc Travolta. All right. So three, <laughs> three of those bad ratings is what I got. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. And so we cannot suggest that you go out and get this. But if you totally disagree with our thoughts and opinions, then Geiger, what should they do? I don't know. No, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you could take those opinions and shove them up your own you ass. You could totally stick those up your asshole. You Where the should crocs? they stick their opinions? <laughs> You can go sit down and crock flicks and chill with your significant other. I don't care. No. Um, crock flicks. <laughs> um, it's just... I've really been wanting to flip a everybody loves crack men in here, but I <laughs> no good place to put it. I would just like, I was thinking about <laughs> Elf, but then what, what you would just call it crack? <laughs> like, yeah, what's that famous 80s cartoon, a cartoon show, Crock? Uh, sure. It could be all of them. Anyway. Basically, if you want to get in touch with us and give us some feedback, again, thank you very much to Simone. I know we, we're giving you the business a little bit, but it's all in good fun. We really appreciate you taking the time to send us some uh, messages. And if you'd like to do the same, uh, if you'd like to tell us what you think of the snacks, suggest new snacks, ask questions for the mailbag, participate in any way, you can get in touch with us. Uh, you tried that at gmail.com, at you tried that on um, Twitter. You tried that group on Facebook, and we have a Facebook page. We're on Instagram. We're on YouTube. And we are also uh, – we have a small corner of the Australian national government's website. I think it's Australia – I think it's uh, croc.gov. I think it was what it is. On the side there, you can see it has a picture of Croc Dundee, the, who I can only assume is the president of Australia. And uh, <laughs> he uh, he personally promotes our podcast. Hence our <laughs> what you could name it <laughs> everything. <laughs> that was part of our agreement. He would promote our podcast and we would make the podcast forty percent of the words would be <laughs> <laughs> right? He's our only advertiser. Paid us seven dollars. The last debate, I'm just picturing like one guy in a suit and tie and then like Croc Dundee just sitting there in a leather vest and a gator teeth necklace just arguing about like, tax reform or criminals or whatever the fuck they care about over there. I don't know. But in Australia, they call it croc reform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, All right. We've got a single snack left to try to challenge the uh, sun bites, and it's going to really have to bring a strong score because the sun bites had two likes and a love. And ever since 
I got this one in the mail. I've been looking forward to eating it. It's called Chomp, and it has a big picture <laughs> of an alligator or a crack. <laughs> Come, on, Rod. Come on, dude. Hey, Come right on. <laughs> I think it's a caiman. I mean, you can't you can't have a snack if you you can't send an Australian snack and then talk about not wanting to be stereotyped. But it's cold chomp and has a fucking crack on the package. Like you just ask him for it. Why is he wearing a do rag? He's he's wearing a backward baseball hat. No, no, there's a tie in it. Yeah. No, that's it's like definitely the, the like the button on top of a hat and like the like the well, maybe it's a do. Who gives? There a is shit? a button on top of his do rag. So he's a gangster croc. Yeah. It says it's a monster chew. And he's got some beats by Croc on his ears. So this is a wafer biscuit and caramel coated with compound chocolate. I'm not entirely sure what compound this chocolate is. Can we just but... say this is a big piece of candy? When I saw it said monster chew, I thought it was gonna be like a Charleston chew, but then it says caramel. Yeah. Right? This is like if you put two Twix end to end, this is essentially the size of this chomp. Spoiler, it's a lot like Twix on the inside. It's really the oh, width okay. of almost the perfect width of a re stick. Like, if I were to look at the yeah. top, um, it really is about the same size as a restick, but about almost twice as long as, a, as one. It's also about, like, the length and color of an ideal toilet stick. If I'm stirring the toilet, <laughs> I'm not using something this short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Also, that something that looks like it's coated and shit already. I want, like, a six-foot wizard staff or something. I don't want this, like, <laughs> tiny. Okay, Dr. Payne. Six foot? Now you're going too far. <laughs> you want a you want a staff taller than yourself to stir a toilet with? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. This has got a lot more wafer in it than I was expecting. Yeah. This thing feels like eighty percent wafer. It's very light tasting because of that wafer. There's a little caramel on top of it, but it is basically a chocolate coated wafer. And the caramel is like chewy, like car like Charlton chew kind of like almost like rubbery car- caramel. Really get stuck in your teeth. It's very chewy. <sighs> All right. I'll go first here with the champ. I want to like the champ. I really do. I'm not sure that I do. I think if there was something, uh, there was a little less wafer and more caramel, maybe that would do something. Or if there was something else added to it, some peanut butter or something, you know, it's just, it's not quite a complete bar, in my opinion. I think it's just okay. It's very close to like, just because it's fine. Like, it's a bar I could see myself eating. But I, to be totally fair, I'm going to have to just barely slide this into indifferent to that. Because it, it had a lot of potential that it's not meeting. So I'm going to officially go with an indifferent to that. Geiger, what do you think? Yeah. All right, great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to dig karma onto my teeth. You don't um, say yep and then stop till the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all the time we have uh, just staring at this thing i agree i was looking forward to this one the most there is way too much wafer in, wafer in here it's um it's almost like eating a cracker covered in chocolate at certain points the caramel is of the caramel kind that i do not like like i like caramel stuff when it's like a caramello when it's really like gooey stringy caramel sure this is like sticky get wedged in the crevices of your mouth caramel which i don't prefer it doesn't, the chocolate's fine. I mean, it doesn't taste bad. It's just not something I would probably, like, I'm very, this is the definition to me of uh, indifferent to that. This is just kind of down the middle. All right, Chad. Well, frankly, I couldn't disagree with you guys more. Wow. Wow. This thing's fucking horrible. Whoa. Ooh. It's really, really, really bad. There is some aftertaste that's in my mouth that I think is just disgusting. Toilet stuff. <laughs> It's probably toilet water, <laughs> but it could also be, it's, I, it's, it's maybe the wafer, something about the caramel. I don't know. I was just looking through the ingredients list, trying to figure out what it was, and I, I couldn't come up with anything. Uh, it's way too chewy. The consistency is bad. I don't even think the chocolate is, like, all that great. I'm going to drop a bomb here. Hate that. Whoa. This thing sucks. Really? I, I barely had a second bite of it. I didn't even want to have the second bite after the first one. That is shocking. You yourself prefaced it by saying it tastes a lot like Twix. You don't feel that way about Twix. I thought that at first. That was like right as I first like kind of bit into it. Mm -hmm. And then I started to chew it and it was all downhill. I do like Twix. When you said you couldn't disagree more... Mm-hmm. I really didn't even know which way you were going to go with it. I I just I thought there was just as good a chance of you telling me you loved it. 
What's the worst part of it? Like, what do you, where do you think they could have improved the most? I think the problem is the wafer. The wafer tastes like super stale or something. Like, this is how bad it is. To wash it out of my mouth, I went back for that uh, Croc Fiction Diet Coke. Like, to, to just to try to get the flavor out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The wafer is just really bad, but I don't think the caramel's helping either. So, yeah. <laughs> Everything about this is bad. Uh, crack fiction. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite uh, 90s sitcom Ooh. when you were growing up? Designing Crocs. <laughs> you didn't actually like designing women, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to watch it with my mom all the time. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I was a big Annie Potts fan. I liked uh, Crack with Children, with Crack Bundy. <laughs> that was a good one, yeah. <laughs> what about a pregnant crocodile that's just rolling around in the Gagger, what's one you watch? You weren't allowed to watch many. Uh... I could not watch much TV. On Friday nights, we got to watch some TGIC. Thank God it's Croc. And so we had some uh, Croc Matters starring Steve Crockle, whose famous line was, did I croc that? <laughs> it was a How about Boy Meets Croc? Crack? Boy Meets Croc, Full Croc, about a story about a crocodile who just ate a lot of food. <laughs> and then there was uh, Perfect Croc. <laughs> where it was like... Uh, a guy meets his long lost croc cousin from another country. Did you guys watch just have... Doogie Crocker, M. Croc? <laughs> <laughs> I did just watch this cool movie called The Founder. It was about the guy who invented McDonald's. His name was Croc Croc. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, so, Simone, what do you think about us now? <laughs> Let's get something straight. There is nobody still listening at this point in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe Paul Hogan? It's just like that sitcom, How I Met Your Crack, where it had a lot of people watched in the beginning, and then nobody watched anymore because it sucked. <laughs> so the final verdict on the champ was two indifference and a hate. So uh, bad ratings for the champ. That's a real... S- you know what? Uh, this my opinions are really thrown for a loop here because when before we opened anything, I really thought that Chomp and the Sunbites would be flipped, but in this case, the Sunbites were the clear winner today. Still an overall good showing from the Australian snacks. There was only one that I really didn't like that much. The cherry, right? Yeah, yeah, the cherry one. Well, the good news for those of you who love the crack jokes is that. We still have three more Australian snacks to go through. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think the number of people that love those jokes is three, and they're all on this Skype call right now. <laughs> also, if you love trying to think of old 90s sitcoms, which I have completely run out of now. Wait, Murphy Croc, got one more. <laughs> Tell me the truth here. The truth. Yeah. <laughs> Do you find... <laughs> this yeah. is kind of a serious question. This is a serious okay. question with the word crack inserted in it, but the question is still relevant. Okay. Do you believe in crack? <laughs> Do you find it difficult to go back and watch the Cracksby show now that, like, if you saw the Cracksby show on now, would you be like, I can't watch this anymore? Or could you say... There is no way... And I used to love that show. I watched it a ton yeah. as a kid. And it is... And, like, I'm a big... Like, usually I can separate art from artists. Like, I like Michael Jackson, even though he's probably a bad person, or was. But there's no way I could go back and watch Crocs be show. <laughs> now, just, like, knowing, like, as he, like, sidles up, like, I got the Jello pudding pop, and it's got some roofies in it, or whatever. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> I remember that episode. (laughs) We should have known. Yeah, weirdly (laughs) pressure. Uh, Yeah, I I also loved it. We there was one show we were allowed to watch when we were kids, and it was really funny. I do legitimately think the cross the (laughs) Crocsby show, Jesus, was like really funny, like starring Cliff (laughs) Crocstable. But uh, and my sister loved it. My sister. Um, actually, I think bought all the DVDs, all the shows. Like she owns all the, the Crocsby shows on DVD. <laughs> so it, I, I would have the same problem. It's just difficult <laughs> to give a serious answer while wanting to say Croc a million times. Also, <laughs> it's difficult, like just knowing how terrible a person is. I think I, I couldn't watch it and laugh anymore because I, I would just be looking at this guy who is like, I think he, like just seeing him smile and grin would just seem sinister. Now it'd be so strange. 
I also can't watch shows anymore with laugh tracks. Yeah. I think having like any show that has a laugh track is immediately not funny. The only show that's still funny with a laugh track is Croxfeld. Everything else is just really like it's it's <laughs> unwatchable if there's a laugh track. It used to be called a crack sign. <laughs> <laughs> was your favorite episode the one with the soup proxy in it <laughs> what about you Novak uh, yeah I can't and I, I agree with you that I like the show like it's disappointing not that I was watching the show ever like I can't even tell you the last time I saw an episode anyway but if by chance I wanted to it came through you know it was on one time I wanted to watch it I would have enjoyed it because I did think it was a good show I think everyone sort of was in agreement that the show was good it was a good show and now it's gone forever i mean you can't it's got to erase it from time it's just weird too because i think his image was so different like if there's certain guys like sure we kind of know they're like you know like charlie sheen right is like uh, that's maybe an extreme example but yeah he's just kind of a degenerate and not that that makes it okay but like Who's you're sheen? just like well, <laughs> crackly <laughs> sheen uh, <laughs> you know but it's like more like you just roll your eyes with it you know, with Cosby, he had such a warm and, like, professorial, and, like, he wrote all these books about parenting. And, like, so it's just very, like, uh, unusual that, like, it was him that, like, he had this weird sinister side to him that makes it creepier than normal, I think. Oh, are we going to end the episode? Are we going to end the episode talking about that? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone uh, has to do one crack sitcom before you go. <laughs> let's, just, let's just end it thinking about our one fan, Croc Hogan. And it just hearing all these croc references just gets him croc hard, and he's just sitting there, just <laughs> absolutely blasting to our episode. Hey, this is the president of Australia you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. What did you say? We call him Mr. President, and then when you talk about his his giant erect croc, <laughs> hey, <laughs> uh, okay, your turn. All right, well, I'm gonna go get my cracks off. Yeah. <laughs> the shoes. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. We'll uh, see you next time when we will be back out of Australia for the, a little while, so you, you can safely download the next episode, and we will be trying three brand new snacks. Deuces. Crack. <laughs> <laughs>